it's a legacy defining weekend for Nebraska basketball. You know, I think about what Nebraska basketball is every year, Rob, when we have the legends weekend and it's the same five year era that we seem to celebrate every year. Cause that's all there is. Mm-hmm. You get a little bit of a Dave Hoppin flavor and then you get the nineties era and that's it. That's, that's the legacy of Nebraska basketball. That Tim Miles team that made the tournament, you don't really see it get much run. No, outside of Roby, like, well, outside the the fourteen team, hardly anybody comes back. And then from the seventeen eighteen team that won twenty two games, okay, really only Roby is the one that. Comes like, has Petaway ever set foot back in Lincoln? Not that I know of. He may have, but he doesn't do it publicly. He doesn't come back for those events. Hmm. But this team, when you think about it, has a real opportunity to cement themselves. In the history books of Nebraska basketball, they and do. It's and teed up. Fred Hoiberg, like he's he's totally cognizant of that as well. Like so, during that Legends weekend when that ninety three ninety four team was back in town, he made it a point to have his current group be around those guys as much as possible and to see their reception and like how revered they still were this far along later, uh, just for winning a Big Ten or a big conference tournament. Big championship eight. yeah big eight yeah and so like that was like look look at what these guys did just imagine if you won a tournament game imagine if you went to the sweet 16 just oh. like you guys would be legends it would forever be. casey tomanaga at age like 65 would still be and so so that goes to the point of of legacy like this season is great and they all want to accomplish like stuff for this year but like on top of what it means for the here and now what it could mean for their futures you see it with football all the time like these these guys from the championship teams like they have like careers based off of their college Basically, football sports experience. talk radio in nebraska is centered around guys that play in the 90s and so this team has an opportunity i mean maybe not to reach national championship football player level but like they could have a situation where whatever they wanted to do in nebraska they could do it mm-hmm. i mean as far as like career opportunities and continuing to kind of play off of that sure. and if nothing else every time they would come back they would be welcome back like they were the biggest celebrities ever so i mean i think that that's that's something they've really kind of tried to ingrain in these guys that the season you know is is huge for you guys but just think about just what it means beyond mm-hmm. and, and what you accomplish now could define your future Mm-hmm. In the a guy, lot of ways. The guy I feel bad about that's not a part of this is Sam Greasel because I feel like he's every bit a part of these guys, but he just only got to play one year with I them. Know. But well, Bandamel too, and Greasel being a Lincoln guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know he, him betting on Hoiberg to come back. I mean, that was kind of the start of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he yeah. played a significant part in it, absolutely. Yeah. And there's, I mean, but he's the guy though that I think everyone, at least that is around and, and watching this whole thing play out, will understand that. I mean, he's part of it. Like he's he's as important of a piece as anybody. And just because of what you said, Sean. So like when he came back, uh, I can't remember which game it was this year, uh, but he was back here. I mean, Bryce was back here, um, and like he was just walking around like the the man of the town, you know. And I think that he'll always be remembered as one of the most important dominoes that got things rolling. For part him. of this, kind of. Well, and it's just something about in-state kids, particularly Omaha guys. They they've just kind of held their nose up towards Nebraska basketball and. This could be a moment to help turn yeah, that. Haven't they? And you know, I'm an Omaha guy. I grew up around it all. I went to a lot of Crane games growing up. I went to a lot of Nebraska games. I so I, I know both programs well. And, yeah, you do. And it it just I, I, well, I saw it change. I mean, I saw the change when Altman beat. I was at the game when Altman beat the Tyron Lucy. Speaking of legacy, Fred. I mean, if they just get that one win, mm-hmm. and Fred Hoiberg nails down first NCAA tournament win in Nebraska history. Huge. It'd be gigantic. It'd be gigantic for program momentum. A lot of the guys are back next year. Um, he's got a team coming back that mm-hmm. looks good. In the transfer, they'll get two or three pieces, right, yeah. Rob? Oh, yeah. Is that ongoing? Hey, Is Frank, that happening right now? Yeah, Monday was the opening of the portal for basketball. Right. Frankie Fiddler, I, I want to ask you yeah, that ask because that. he went in from UNO, former Bellevue West guy. He's yep. going to get some attention. What, what can you tell us? Yeah, Nebraska's reached out. Um, you know, I'm sure it's just preliminary right now, kind of gauging interest, but, uh, from everything that I know, there's certainly mutual interest there. What, what is ultimately going to define it is what happens with Nebraska's roster after the season is over and who leaves, who stays, because it's got to make sense for Nebraska and it's got to make sense for Frankie. Like he's, if he's going to go somewhere where he wants to play and play a lot, if Nebraska brings everybody back from this NCAA tournament team that we're talking about as one of the the greatest teams in program history, what role would he potentially have here? So that's that's kind of what they got to figure out. But if 
there is a situation where a role opens up that he can come in and play substantial minutes, it makes a lot of sense. And honestly, Sean, a lot of it goes back to what you're talking about, the, the in-state factor. The fact that Nebraska wants guys that care about Nebraska. They want people that care about the people, care about the, the, the program beyond just what can Nebraska do for me. They want guys that want to do things for Nebraska. And in-state kids do that. And Frankie Fiddler certainly would check that box. Would Creighton be interested in Fiddler? I've heard that they would. I, the initial list of schools that reached out to him when he hit the portal, they weren't on there. But, you know, they're right in his backyard. What's, so. what, what role were we talking about? Like, give me a comp. Well, I mean, comp. he's honestly like a lot of what C.J. Wilcher does. Okay. Now, C.J. obviously walked on senior day. Um, but that was a lot of it to acknowledge his graduation uh, back in December. So that's like he's a type of guy that if if he's back, I don't know. I just don't know like what did you need two of those guys? Fiddler can shoot it like Wilcher. Well, yeah, but at Wilcher's Wilcher's a better shooter. At Wilcher's peak, he's better than Fiddler. We saw yeah. it against Wisconsin. Yeah. I mean that that like I don't know if Fiddler could have done that. I mean, come on, like that was unbelievable. Work. I agree, but CJ is very streaky. So the way that he was at his peak, he also saw the the floor. So mm -hmm. like you, you kind of never know what you're going to get for him. Right. Like he was six man of the year shooing mid-season and then completely fell off. So all that being said, if CJ wants to come back, then I think it's going to make it difficult for Frankie. But again, what if other people leave? You know, like you never know. It's college basketball. There's mm -hmm. always people you don't expect to leave. But I do agree with you, Sip. I think that they have a very good chance to bring back a good portion, if not nearly all, of the Keep. primary rotation from this season back next year. You're only losing Josiah, Kase, and Boogie Coleman for sure. They're all the rest of the guys have an opportunity to come back, and I think the majority of them will. Well, and Fred has now re-solidified his footing here to get a new contract. Where there, let's face it, there was a rocky point with him and Trev Alberts. No doubt. Oh God, yeah, no doubt. Like Trev cut his salary by a large percentage. Mm -hmm. Like what Trev did to Frost and Fred, that you don't see that kind of stuff happen in mm -hmm. that many places. Where well, he held them accountable again. I where you publicly, was, yeah. you know, shave a guy's head in the town square. Right. I mean, it doesn't happen that many places. <laughs> like <laughs> interesting analogy. Um, no, but you're right. It did. It doesn't. He did it. Not, did it two coaches. I mean, yeah. and Frost didn't respond well to it. One responded well. One didn't. Frost got upset and it affected everything he did. Right. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, and Fred responded exceptionally well. Changed the changed the way he operates. Yeah. Really. Fundamentally. I mean, a, a, the major reason why Nebraska did this shift with their style, the players they recruit, and all that sort of thing, the way their staff is structured, is because of Trev Alberts and because of those Interesting. ultimatums that were laid out there. He kind of forced Fred's hands to have to do those things and adapt. Mm -hmm. if you want That's to be not here, easy to do. That's not it's easy. Not easy to Which do. a lot of ADs wouldn't even ever do that. No. Well, it's not easy. Especially a, a guy that didn't even hire the coach. Right. It's not easy for a coach to adjust like that, too. But Fred gives so a lot Fred. of compromise on both sides. Yeah, I guarantee it was not comfortable. But it's look at how it's worked out. You do got to give Trev a little credit for that. Well, that's 20. Fred gets the credit. Yes. Let, let's make that clear. But the impetus was Trev. The haircut, as Sean calls that was it the 21 22 <laughs> season, Robin, where they had to play like they had all those games canceled for COVID. Or, yeah, that was what? and they had fans of the game still, but that was, I mean, a low point. Like yeah. that was the lowest point of Pinnacle Bank Arena yeah. that season. So there was the COVID season and the year after, and then the year we well, did the show with the McGowan's. Yeah, that, that, so that, that was 21 22. And I, I'll never forget that Wisconsin game. It was like four in the afternoon or three in the afternoon. And they just got drilled in PBA, and they were just mad old guys getting up and screaming. Yeah, it was bad. Because, for one, they were bad losing. Old. They were losing bad, and then just the style. and the, Who was the, the TCU play. transfer? What was his name again? TCU. Sudanese player from TCU. That oh, um, uh, Lat I mean, Poor. I mean, he, he couldn't hit the ocean, and he was getting yeah. get bitten the board. And they structured their roster to where they needed him to be really good. And, and he wasn't. It just felt I mean, some of those moves on paper look great, but yeah. that team kind of changed it to get to this team. Yep, no doubt. And, and we're heading to Memphis. And we're, now, look at us. With a great chance to win. With a great chance to beat look Texas A&M. All right. I want you full I'm report sorry. from the official tour guide of Memphis. Yep. I'm simple. not the official tour guide. I won't be doing – I'm just going to tell Rob on air. I'm not going to do a lot. I, I'm... There are people that, like, are already asking where we're going to be because they well, want to buy true. you a margarita. Well <laughs> – 
I, mean, I don't want to disappoint. Is there a Mexican <laughs> restaurant on Beale Street? Yes, there is. There is. <laughs> there is. I didn't go in it though. I mean, my favorite one. There's a fish place down there. Okay. Um, that I liked. I went to Hawaii with you for a week, and I'll, for the record, Sip had one margarita the whole week. Yeah, I don't. That thing's a little. Took over a picture right. of it on Twitter. Went viral. I mean, when we went to when we went to cover the game in 2014 in San Antonio, I went to the game, covered it. Next day, got on a plane and left. I mean, I didn't. I didn't go to the Riverwalk. I mean, I'm not. We're, I I hate to be a Debbie Downer here, but I'm going there to work. Business I mean, trip. Yeah, this is a business trip. Good I got to do Tunnel Talk Thursday night. That's where I'll be in my room. Doing Robin will do talk. his Tunnel Talk on the plane. Yeah. Like a veteran. <laughs> because I know how to prioritize my, prioritize my time. Yeah, I'll do it in my room. I will enjoy the scenes of Memphis. Yeah, you will enjoy I'll, them I'll, more than I'll me. get everything done and everything will be ready to go. And then I will leave myself ample opportunity to experience everything Memphis is about. I just experienced it, though. That's the thing. That's true. Our I, boy, uh, Bill Hooks, will be out there. Yeah. Scott Gorka, yep. um, courtside guy, our good friend. And I mean, the, the big crew of guys, it'll be a fun weekend for Robin. I yeah. will be sleeping much of the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'll be doing. It's just like, you don't just have like a bag of chips for dinner. Like No, no, we'll some, go somewhere nice. Okay, good. Yeah, at least, we'll at least do the, a probably meals. Denny's. Oh, hey, Robin, I will tell you this. We will do a very nice meal. Okay. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's all I ask. Yes, one hundred. Well, you got a lot of time on the front. If they somehow win, oh god, that'll be awesome. Yeah, then we'll have some time on Beale Street because they could end up playing Sunday night. Mm -hmm. See, Beale Street's really fun. I like going there at like six o'clock. Okay, it's not too busy at that point, but it's it's still rolling. In fact, if they win, I'm guessing they would play Sunday night. Usually, the Sunday daytime games, they're exclusive windows on CBS, and they're they're more reserved for the true blue bloods. So Nebraska would probably, I mean, more than likely, they'd, they'd be pushed into one of the Turner Network games later in the evening. Yeah. Because you always get the Kansas, the Kentuckys, the North sure. Carolina, the Dukes. They get those windows on CBS. Right. And I don't know if Houston's that kind of draw. Hmm. Might well, be. The, like Sean says, a perfect time for, for Nebraska fans, 550 on a Friday night. Oh, perfect. perfect. Tanner's, I can't even imagine. Like, I know the last time, 10 years ago, I was in Tanner's for that Baylor game, and that was their record sales day they ever had had. Is that, at that right? Point. It was insane, right? and I'm guessing it will be similar. And that was an 11 a.m. game. Yeah, that then the early. women will play. We haven't talked about that. The women play Friday night at like 9. Yeah, right after. Wow. So you can write two columns on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, Abby will have that covered. Yeah, we'll have Abby on there. Yeah. All right. Well, gentlemen, safe travels to Memphis. I am jealous, envious. You should be. I will be in Sioux Falls. I'll get. I'll drive back Friday morning. I, I have, I'm doing an event up there, so I'm driving back Friday for you're that. You're doing an event Thursday night, really, for a Housman Construction up there. So, well, you're gonna know how I felt when I was snowed in in Iowa City, and you guys are lounging on a beach at the Polynesian Bowl out in Hawaii. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob, that's horrifying. <laughs> oh God, it was a great week. <laughs> it was. I'm sure it was. It was. It was. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I got to tell you, it was ridiculous.